Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Slick EQ from Variety of Sound and Tokyo Dawn Labs. And also its bigger brother, Slick EQ Gentleman's Edition. Slick EQ provides three bands of EQ, plus a high pass filter, with optional saturation and a distinctly analog style sound and workflow, and is generously provided as a free download. While for a small license fee, the Gentleman's Edition comes with some extra EQ and saturation models, plus useful extra features such as a tilt EQ or a low pass filter. The core functions are the same for both plugs, however. Let's start with the default American EQ style and dial in a high frequency shelving boost. Notice how smooth and natural this sounds with no unwanted phasey side effects, even with large amounts of boost. Or when switched to a bell shape instead of a shelf. At the other end, the low shelf is similarly gentle and musical sounding, and also provides a bell shape instead of a shelf if required. Slick EQ provides a traditional knob-only interface with no analyzer displays or graphs to distract you from the sound. However, the Gentleman's Edition allows you to view the curve shape for the current settings. And of course, we can load the plug into Christian Bud's free VST plugin analyzer software. So we can see the soft, gentle curves of the shelving filters and the symmetrical cuts and boosts. The mid band has a gentle bell shape with a proportional Q design, so the bell gets narrower as you cut or boost further. And again, cuts and boosts are symmetrical. So if I switch one of the other bands to a bell shape and cut the same frequency, the two bands will cancel each other perfectly. If you're using the Gentleman's Edition, however, the mid band can also be switched to a narrower bell shape again with proportional Q and symmetrical cuts and boosts. Both the free version and the gentleman's edition provide the auto gain parameter, however, which estimates the gain change caused by the current EQ settings and automatically compensates. This can make EQ decisions quicker and more intuitive and makes it easier to judge the difference when bypassing or when comparing different settings using the AB buttons at the top of the interface. So far, the EQ we've applied models the magnitude and phase response of analog EQs, but none of the saturation. The output saturation section to the right is set to linear, or in other words, totally clean and undistorted. And the EQ saturation is turned off. Let's turn this on instead. And we're now applying gentle saturation within the EQ model. So boosting now also subtly adds harmonics. Saturated high frequency boosts can help to add a glossy sheen to the treble. While boosting lows can make the bass richer and thicker, as well as just louder. Of course, the degree of saturation will very much depend on the input levels you feed the plug. So boosting the input level and cutting the output level will increase the level of the added harmonics, and vice versa. However, for the sake of convenience, Slick EQ provides a calibrate field to the right, or just below in the Gentleman's Edition, which you can use instead of changing your gain structure. Turn this parameter down to tame the added harmonics and make the saturation more subtle. Or up to exaggerate the effect and drive the saturation hard. EQ saturation only affects EQ boosts. Cutting remains completely clean. But if I cut and boost the same frequency as I did earlier, with EQ saturation enabled, I can gently add harmonics to a specific frequency band without affecting the frequency balance. 
OK, let's dial in a high shelving boost again and try switching to British mode instead. The British curves are still smooth and gentle, but the shape is quite different, with a slight dip just below the rise of the shelf and distinct differences between cutting and boosting. British bell shapes are even more asymmetrical, with a much tighter, narrower cue for cuts than for boosts, which can be useful for more surgical notching of problem frequencies, or for scooping mid-range. And in British mode, cutting and boosting at the same frequency won't cancel out, but will create complex shapes with bumps either side of the target frequency. Between them, the American and British modes should cover most mixing duties. However, we also have a German mode available, with bell filters even gentler and sweeter than the American model, and with unusual tilt shelf filters that change shape as you boost or cut further. With small amounts of gain, the shelves have a large linear region, making them very useful for mastering duties. Like the American mode, German mode has symmetrical cuts and boosts, so a bell cut can be perfectly cancelled by a boost at the same frequency. Switching to Soviet mode, we again find shelves that change shape dramatically depending on the amount of gain applied. But this time, small amounts of cut or boost produce a relatively sharp and well-defined shelf while larger cuts or boosts have a much gentler, smoother transition. In a similar manner, Soviet mode bell filters are much narrower and more surgical than the previous three modes when only small amounts of gain are applied, but have a unique inverse proportional cue, so the bell gets wider and gentler with larger cuts or boosts. This makes Soviet mode useful for subtle surgical tweaks or for broad brush reshaping of the source sound with more extreme gain settings. Like the British mode, cuts and boosts are not symmetrical, with cuts a little narrower than boosts. The Gentleman's Edition also offers a fifth Japanese EQ mode. This is the most surgical of the types available, with steeper shelves when cutting and the proportional cue bell shapes are much narrower when cutting than when boosting. Switching the mid-band to the narrower bell shape allows you to target resonances at specific frequencies with sharp, narrow cuts. Both versions of the plug also provide a high-pass filter, which, importantly, is applied after the EQ section. This means that you can add extra harmonics to the bass with a saturated low frequency boost. And then clean up the low subs without removing those harmonics, which can help to preserve the impression of deep bass. Users of the Gentleman's Edition also benefit from an alternative shape for the high pass filter, with a bump centered an octave higher than the cutoff so you can enhance the low fundamental of a kick drum, for example, while cleaning up the sub-frequencies below it. This version also features an on-off switch for the high-pass filter. With the standard version, you can bypass the filter by turning it down below 10 Hz. OK, let's take a closer look at the output stage saturation I alluded to earlier. Linear mode is clean and undistorted, though you may still be saturating within the EQ section if this is enabled. But the other modes all add subtle harmonics and gently smooth out transients in the manner of expensive analogue equipment. And each type has a different dynamic response and will add different patterns of harmonics. Note that even with Calibrate turned all the way up, the distortion remains relatively subtle. The aim is not to provide obvious guitar amp style distortion, but rather the subtle character and mojo of analog transformers and valve stages. Small amounts of this kind of subtle distortion can sometimes make signals seem clearer and better defined, or thicker and richer. 
And if you're using the Gentleman's Edition, you will have an extra two saturation styles to choose from. Excited and toasted, as well as the silky, mellow and deep options available in the Standard Edition. When loaded into a stereo channel, Slick EQ provides a choice of channel processing modes at the top. If you're actually processing a mono signal, you can switch to mono mode and save a few CPU cycles. This can be useful in hosts such as Reaper or Traction that don't provide true mono channels. Or you can process just the sum or difference channels, otherwise known as middle or side, and can use two instances if you want independent EQs for both mid and side channels at the same time. The Gentleman's Edition also has a few other tricks up its sleeve. A switchable low-pass filter, for the choice of gentle or extremely gentle slopes. Or the uniquely linear tilt filter, which tilts the frequency response either side of the centre frequency. This is a great way to make your program material brighter or darker without changing its fundamental character. The tilt filter also has an alternative V-shape mode, which produces a gentle smile curve when turned up. Or a frown when turned down with a center frequency sweepable from 300 Hz up to 3K. And finally, the innocuous little Phi button for the low EQ band. This switches in a network of all-pass filters, which don't change the frequency response at all, but which delay low frequencies below the cutoff. The effect of this depends very much on the audio you are processing. Sometimes it can shift your focus towards the mid-range frequencies, making the low frequencies seem less dominant. Or it might do the opposite, making bass notes appear to sustain a little longer. Or it might help to soften transients in a pleasing way. The phi function can also help to make waveforms more symmetrical. And of course, it will change the phase relationship with the rest of the mix. So make sure to listen in context, especially in multi-microphone setups like a drum kit. That's all I've got time for in this video. But if you need more information, you can enable the online help button for context-sensitive hints. Or you can open the user manual from the About box. Thanks for watching.